Wouldn't you like to take a trip far beyond the clouds at least once in your life? A ride on a rocket or a stay on the ISS? Maybe see what the Earth looks like from a great height. Even once, go out into outer space. Take off the helmet of your spacesuit and take a deep breath. Hold on, because in a space vacuum, it's impossible to breathe. Is the extreme vacation canceled? Unfortunately, yes, so far. But let's imagine that someday, air will appear in space. Will it then be possible to travel there without a protective suit? Or, on the contrary, will a catastrophe occur? Let's start with the simplest and most necessary. To breathe in space without a spacesuit, you need to replace the vacuum of space with a mixture of gases called air. Just like in our atmosphere, it should contain 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. The remaining 1% consists of argon, neon, helium, methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and a few other gases. And it's exactly such a mixture that should fill the expanse of space so that we can breathe freely, as in the Earth's atmosphere. And it should be in plentiful supply. It would seem that as soon as air appears in space, then what more could you want, right? You can relax and breathe as much as you like, while at the same time, perhaps also listen to an incredible concert. In outer space, there are constantly explosions of supernovae, collisions of gas and dust clouds, the solar wind, and the ionosphere of planets. You would also be able to hear all of this quite well, as sound waves will be propagated by vibrating air molecules. You don't even need the help of sensitive and powerful instruments, such as those that help us listen to the sounds of space now. However, there's just one catch. You need to be close to the source of the sound, which can be very dangerous at the same time. The fact is that sound vibrations have the tendency to fade due to environmental resistance. Therefore, even noise from the other side of the city cannot be heard here on Earth. So, you're unlikely to hear the incredible symphony of planets, stars, and nebulae. I hope this doesn't upset you too much. After all, there will still be the unique ability to breathe freely in outer space. Imagine how you happily inhale the air again and again. But suddenly, such disasters begin around you that you just won't want to continue to enjoy your vacation, and you'll be motivated to return to Earth as soon as possible. But can you do so? Literally, in a matter of hours, all life on our planet after the appearance of air and space would be destroyed due to friction. When a spaceship enters the atmosphere, it encounters strong friction. For the same reason, small meteorites almost never reach the Earth's surface. They simply burn up in the atmosphere. But this will only be the beginning of the apocalypse. Our planet will attract more and more air from space, and therefore, the atmospheric pressure on Earth will grow rapidly. In a short time, it will crush all living things. Gradually, due to the forces of friction, Earth's rotation and its satellite, the Moon, will start to slow down and their orbits will change. It's highly probable that the Moon will fall on our planet, and then the Earth on the Sun. True, none of us will become an eyewitness to these events. According to some estimates, these events could only occur tens or hundreds of thousands of years after space becomes filled with oxygen. In the meantime, whoever isn't crushed by atmospheric pressure will be consumed by fire. This will happen as follows. As soon as outer space fills with air, sunlight won't be able to reach the Earth at least in the optically observable range. Eternal night will come. However, people will not remain in pitch darkness for long. Soon, there will even be too much light, because everything around us will sparkle with a bright flame. With increasing atmospheric pressure, the temperature will rise. And within 24 hours, the surface of our planet will be completely covered by fires. 
Flames burn Earth to the ground, and the once blue planet will forever turn into a charred, lifeless, heavenly body. And other planets in the solar system may also become unrecognizable. For example, gas giants such as Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus will have every chance to turn into full-fledged stars. Substances for them to increase their mass, at least for Jupiter and Saturn, will be very plentiful. And all the terrestrial planets for tens of thousands of years are likely to fall into the Sun. Significant changes are also likely to occur in the galaxy. First of all, they'll be associated with the mass of air that will appear instead of the vacuum of space. The air in interstellar space will begin to collapse, that is, to compress under its own mass. As a result of this, new types of stars unknown to us will probably be lit. These luminaries, existing for a short period by astronomical standards, will light up everywhere, in galaxies and intergalactic spaces. It's impossible to accurately predict in advance what these new stars will be like, because they'll mainly be composed of nitrogen and oxygen. Although, by the way, recently, Brazilian astronomers discovered one of the strangest stars at a distance of 1,200 light-years from Earth. This white dwarf, which was named Dox, has an atmosphere with 99.9% .9 oxygen. The uniqueness of Dox lies in the fact that almost all other white dwarfs have an atmosphere with light elements, such as hydrogen and helium, the remnants of thermonuclear fuel from the previous life cycle of the star. Due to their weight, they're normally located in the outer layer. Where they went from the atmosphere of Dox is unknown. The mass of the entire universe will increase greatly from the weight of the gases once it's filled with air. It may happen that because of this, it ceases to continue to expand. And as a result, it will return back to a super hot, super dense state as during the Big Bang or even shrink into one incredibly small and super dense point called a singularity. That is, this mixture of gases, which is a most valuable and vital thing for human beings, is theoretically capable of turning the entire universe into nothing. Honestly, I wouldn't want to destroy the world even in my mind, but fortunately, there's the likelihood of another scenario. In this one, nothing will happen when air appears in outer space. This indirectly confirms the new discovery of Chinese astronomers. They found molecular oxygen in the galaxy Markarian 231, located in the constellation of Ursa Major, at a distance of 231,560 million light-years away. Active star formation is occurring in this galaxy. In one of its regions alone, more than 100 solar mass stars are formed per year. For comparison, in our quiet and calm Milky Way, the average star formation rate is 1 to 2 solar mass stars per year. It should be noted that molecular oxygen was also previously discovered in the Orion Nebula. But in the Markarian 231 galaxy, there's about a hundred times more than in the Orion Nebula. However, there's nothing burning in Markarian 231. The gas is not forming a huge number of stars and black holes. True, breathing without a spacesuit in this part of the cosmos is unlikely to work. Indeed, it probably has less than 20% oxygen, and there's no nitrogen or other gases as in the Earth's atmosphere. But who knows? Maybe over time, astronomers will discover a galaxy with the ideal mixture of these gases, such that it allows you to breathe freely and at the same time doesn't destroy the usual order of space. Then, after hundreds of years, and maybe even earlier, our descendants will be able to travel freely in interstellar space without a spacesuit. Do you think it's possible? And what events, in your opinion, will cause the appearance of air in the universe? Write in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.
and click on the bell. All the most interesting travels through space and the Earth are yet to come. And yes, be sure to invite your friends to join us. Together, it will be more fun. Until next time.